This is part 19 of Angular 6 tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss form array in Angular with examples. To build a reactive form in Angular, we use three fundamental building blocks, form control, form group and form array. In our previous videos in this series, we discussed form control and form group. In this video, we'll discuss form array. A form array, as the name implies, is an array. It contains an array of form controls, form groups and nested form arrays. Just like how a form group can contain nested form groups, a form array can also contain nested form arrays. We usually use an array to hold like items, but a form array can contain unlike items as well. That is, a few elements in a given array can be form controls. A few of them in that same array can be form groups and the rest of them can be form arrays. Let's look at an example now. At the moment, when we click this load data button, nothing happens because the code in the associated event handler method is commented. Let's create a form array here. First, I'm going to create a constant. Let's name it form array. To create an instance of form array, we are going to make use of the form array class constructor. So new form array. We don't have this type imported. So let's import it from Angular Forms. It's an array, so we include a pair of square brackets. As we already discussed, a form array can contain form controls, form groups and even nested form arrays. First, in this form array, let's include a form control. For that, I'm going to use the form control class. We don't have this type imported, so let's import it from Angular Forms. Let's set the default value of this form control to John. Let's also attach a validator. I'm going to attach required validator. Next, let's add a form group to this form array. For that, let's use the form group class. Within this form group, let's create a form control. I'm going to name it country. Let's add the default value to an empty string and let's also include required validator. Finally, let's also include a nested form array. At the moment, within this form array, we've got three elements. To programmatically find the number of elements in a form array, we can use length property. Let's actually log the length property of the form array to the console. Notice when we click this load data button, we get 3 as expected. If you want to iterate over the elements in this form array, you can use for loop. Let's create a constant. I'm going to call it control of form array.controls. So we want to loop over all the controls in this form array. To determine if the control that we are currently iterating over is a form array, form group, or a form control, we can use instance of operator. If control instance of form control, then we know we are dealing with a form control. So in this case, let's log a message to the console saying it's a form control. Now let's do the same thing for form group and form array. So if control is an instance of form group, then we know we are dealing with a form group, else it's a form array. Notice in the form array, we've got a form control, form group, and a form array. There are two ways to create a form array. One way is by using the new keyword and the form array class constructor. We have seen this approach in action just now. Another approach is by using the array method of the form builder class. Let's look at this approach in action now. Let's make a copy of this existing form array and change the name to form array 1. Now if we take a look at this class constructor, notice we are already injecting an instance of form builder class and we are using this form builder instance to create a nested form group using the group method of the form builder class. So similarly, to create a form array, we use the array method of the form builder class. So instead of using the form array class constructor, let's use the form builder array method. 
this.fb, our form builder instance, and on that we call the array method. Now, one important point to keep in mind is although we can use a form array to store unlike items, we usually use it to store like items, that is, an array of form controls, form groups, or nested form arrays. So instead of having a form control, form group, and a form array in this form array one, let's include three form controls. So first, let's delete the form group and form array and make two more copies of this form control. Let's say we are using the second form control for storing the department name. So I'm going to set the default value to ID and this third form control for gender and I'm going to set its default value to an empty string. At the moment, this form array one has got three form controls. Now, if you want the value of all these form controls, simply use the value property of the form array. Let's log it to the console and see what we get. Notice when we click this load data button, we get the values of all form controls as an array. We usually use these properties that you see on the slide to determine the state of a form control or a form group. These status properties are also available on a form array instance. For example, if one of the form controls in a form array is touch, then the entire form array becomes touch. Similarly, if one of the form controls in the form array is invalid, then the entire array becomes invalid. Notice in this form array one, we have got three form controls and on this last form control, we have the required validator, but its value is an empty string. So this form control valid status is false. That means when we look at the valid status of this form array one, it will be false as well. Because if one of the form controls is invalid, the entire form array is invalid. So let's log the valid property of our form array and see what we get. Notice we get false as expected. If we include a value for this last form control, then all the form controls in this array are valid. So the valid property of the form array will also be true. Notice the value is true as expected. Now let's look at some of the useful methods of the form array class, push. This method inserts the control at the end of the array. Insert, as the name implies, inserts a control in the array part at the specified index. Remove at removes the control that is present at the specified index in the array. Set control replaces an existing control at the specified index. Finally, add this method returns the control that is present at the specified index in the array. Let's add a new element to this form array using the push method. To the push method, let's pass a new form control and let's set the value of this form control to mark. And if we want to retrieve this form control, we can use at method. So this is going to return us the form control that is present at a specified index. We want the last form control that we are pushing. This index is zero based. So zero, one, two, and this new form control is present at index position three. So let's take that form control and let's retrieve its value. Notice when we click this button, we get mark as expected. Now we don't need all this code, so let's clean this up a bit. Alright, so here we are using a form array to create a group of form controls. We can also use a form group to create this group of form controls. Let's actually do this. Let's make a copy of this form array one and change the name here to form group instead of form array. And to create a form group, instead of using this dot form builder dot array method, let's use this dot form builder dot group method. So we can either use a form group or a form array to create a group of form controls. So the obvious question that comes to our mind is, what's the difference between these two and when to use a form array or a form group? Well, they are similar in many aspects. However, one major difference is that a form array data is serialized as an array whereas a form group is serialized as an object. To see this, let's log both form array and form group instances to the browser console. First, we are logging the form array instance 
Now let's log the form group instance. Notice when we click this load data button, we have form array and form group instances logged to the browser console. If we take a look at the controls collection property, notice it's an array of form controls. On the other hand, if we take a look at the controls collection of the form group instance, notice it's actually an object with key value pairs. Key is the name of the form control and value is the instance of the form control. So the fact that a form array tracks controls as part of an array is very useful when we want to generate form groups and form controls dynamically. For example, if you take a look at this create employee form, notice we have three skill related fields, skill name, experience and proficiency. Now what we want to be able to do is include a button here, add skill and every time we click that button, we want to dynamically generate another set of these three skill related fields that is skill name, experience and proficiency. A form array is a perfect choice for this. In our next video, we'll discuss dynamically generating these skill related fields. That's it in this video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.